Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome everybody to my first tutorial on YouTube about SDR applications. This is going to be a series on how to work with IQ files, how to uh, understand certain signal processing topics, and eventually the goal is to teach you how to make your own SDR applications and SDR softwares. So without further ado, I'm going to be using an RTL SDR. It's cheap, maybe $25, and this is what it looks like here. So you can see this guy has a up converter and an antenna attached, but uh, eventually it makes its way through USB to a laptop. And on the laptop you can run software to look at Spectrum. And it's a really fun hobby. I encourage anybody to get into it. But anyhow, so working w with SDRs requires working with uh, IQ files if you're planning on doing anything more advanced than just looking at spectrum. So if you need to make your own signal processing applications then you need to work with IQ files. So you have to understand how this SDR gets the data to the host, which is the laptop in this case. So the SDR you can see here on its documentation. So it outputs 8-bit IQ samples and it uses 8 bits for I and 8 bits for Q and as you know every 8 bits is a byte and this happens via an analog to digital converter so you get some real voltage a real RF signal that makes its way to the ADC and I'll just show you this diagram here so there's a real signal in the time domain, Y of T. It gets to an amplifier and different RF components till it makes its way to an ADC. And the ADC converts this Y of T time domain signal to Y of N discrete signal with a real and imaginary component. So it, it does that with eight, eight bits, for in our case, for the RTL SDR and these bits will e are either going to be 0 or a 1 depending on what voltage it saw so it will look something like this so this voltage here would give a 0 0 this voltage here will give a 1 1 and this is a 2 bit ADC just as an example so I think we're ready to get to the code now that are prepared for this lesson so we have three ob objectives the first one is working with bits and bytes the second is to make an IQ recording and understand file types. And finally, we're going to open the IQ recordings in Python and look at them. OK, so we talked about this already. And so our 8-bit ADC is going to have 256 possible values, which is 2 to 8. And your large, you can, your 8 uh, positions, you can make an array going from 7 to 0. and Basically, you could have up to all ones, which would be your largest ADC value, and you can have all zeros, which is your smallest ADC value. So we don't want to work with bits, by the way. I mean, that's just how we get them to the computer, but it's much better to work with a decimal number, like 127. So what we do is we can just convert these bits to a decimal representation. So, for example, here, a zero in the seven position, and the rest of them being one, you can calculate that that will become 127. And likewise, if this is a one, now this is the maximum value, it's going to be 255. So, you don't have to do this, but if you just want to understand, it's just focus on this formula here. This will convert uh, an eight bit to a decimal number. Okay, so now we're ready to use the RTL SDR tool to make IQ recordings. So you can ju just type in RTL SDR if you have the software installed, and it tells you how to use it. So for example, you say dash F, the center frequency that you want. I'll say 100 megahertz dot s the sampling rate that you want I'll say 1 megahertz or 1 million samples per second gain 
I'll just pick 20 dB and n number of samples I'm gonna ask for 10,000 samples finally you should give it a file name I'm just gonna call it IQ file so I'm not gonna make a uh, file ending you I'll explain why in a second okay so just created a file called IQ file so we can open that we can look at it here uh, where's IQ file okay here's IQ file it's uh, 20,000 bytes you can see that here so you know what what can you open it with so um, you know it doesn't have like you, we all know what a PNG is uh, we know what a PDF is but um, here we're making the file ourselves so for example I can call this dot JPEG and it's gonna make the file and it's gonna call it uh, IQ file dot JPEG so um, it's not gonna actually be a JPEG so the point is to not get hung up on the what the file name is inside the computer um, what's more important is to just know what is the content of the file so I'm gonna use this file that I already made um, what we in order to see the file you can use a hex editor so I have G hex and look at at the first byte this is the first byte this 7f this is a byte and we know we're using 8-bit unsigned 8-bit uh, which is 127 and you can see the binary as well here so this is these are the 8 bits and if we go to the next byte, this is the i by the way and the next value is the q so this 80 it's hexadecimal representation of uh, 128 and this 128 is a uh, 1 and then the rest is zeros and this is the second i value and the second q value the sec the third i value and the third q value so that's what's inside these iq files that we made so what we want to do is we want to load this into python we'll use this numpy function called from file so you give it the file name and you tell it uh, how to load the data so it's going to take it's going to load the data as unsigned bytes and we're just going to I'm going to print some things just to learn more about the file so we see it has 20,000 elements which are the 20,000 bytes the first value was 127 which we saw that in the hex editor the second value which is the first Q value is 128 and then we can see the bits again just to confirm that it's the same as what we saw in the hex editor okay so again you, why do we have 20,000 bytes if we asked for 10,000 samples right here we said 10,000 again that's because we use one byte for i and one byte for q so let's look at these bytes that we just loaded okay so it looks like all of our byte values are around 127 between 100 and 150 and here's our 20,000 bytes we can also look at as a histogram so the minimum value we we'll expect is 0 and the largest possible value we can expect is 255 that's because we're using an 8-bit ADC and you can see almost everything is just around these we don't have any byte values of 255 and none of 0 so we're looking at byte values and this video is supposed to be about uh, IQ signals so what we need to do is adjust this a bit in Python so the IQ uh, values are just saved as I Q I Q I Q I Q so we need to put them into the form of I plus J Q I plus J Q so the first step is we can use this syntax in Python so if we have a, a list 050505 you can make a second list and you s Python starts with zero so you say zero and then every other element so this list one is gonna grab uh, 
zero, skip five, zero, skip five, zero. And then I'll make a list two, which starts with the first index, which is here, and it goes every other index. So it will go five, five, five. And you can see that's what we have here. So we'll do the same thing with the IQ samples. So these IQ samples that I loaded, um, this will give you the I only, this will give you the Q only. So this isn't what we need, but just to show you, uh, what we need to do to, is put that as one array. So this is our array. So we'll take the I's, and for every I, we're going to add 1J times Q. So we need this 1J so that Python knows we're working with complex numbers. Because, you know, Python doesn't know we're working with RF signals. Python is used for lots of applications. So the first uh, I sample, we saw this already. It was 127. The first Q sample is 128. But now with our array that we just made, it's going to have an IQ sample, which is 127 plus 128J. So now when we plot this, we have the eyes in blue, it's under this orange line, and the uh, Q is in our orange. And we can see the x-axis is correct now. We have 10,000 samples, as we expected. OK, so there's another thing we can do, though, with the x-axis. This is not incorrect, but maybe you want to see it in the time domain instead of as discrete samples. So. In order to do that, you have to just uh, find out how long the recording was in seconds. So, and, and then you should make an array of the time steps so that you can plot the values uh, with the time steps instead of just the number of the sample. So to do that, we have to remember that we, we told it to make 1 million samples per second, and we ended up with 10,000 samples. So just simple algebra. So you'll take the number of samples, and you'll div divide it by the sampling rate. And that's going to give you the duration of the recording. So we can make an X array. So NumPy has a function called linspace. You give it a start value of 0 for 0 seconds. The end value, which is going to be the duration, which is uh, 0 0.01 seconds. And the number of elements that you want it to make which is going to be the number of samples. So this gives us an x-array. So now when we use our plot function, we plot the x-array as the x-axis and the amplitudes or the byte values and the y. So now when we plot it, it's the same exact same image as before, but uh, now your x-axis is in seconds instead of number of sample. But we still have the byte value on the y-axis, which is not good because you know we're not. Our main goal is not to work with bytes. Bytes is just how the our hardware happened to get the samples onto the computer, but we don't want to work with uh, bytes. So there's different SDRs. Here we had an 8-bit SDR, which goes from 0 to 255. We might use a 16-bit SDR. So you know if we think that 255 is a a very strong signal. When you use your 16-bit SDR, that's going to be a weak signal because you know, the 16 bits it will go up to 65,000. So, so we just want to normalize things. So, uh, to normalize something, you'll divide it by the maximum number, but that will normalize between zero and one. So, uh, our our number was we saw our samples were 127. So if you divide it by 255 which is the maximum possible value for us, that will normalize between 0 and 1. But what we want to do is we want to normalize between um, negative 1 and positive 1. So all you do is just multiply that by 2 and then subtract by 1. And that's nothing to do with you know RF for signal processing. That's just a math trick to normalize something. And then again, we can uh, after we normalized it, we can put it into the i plus jq and we can plot it. So again, this is the exact same as before, but now uh, the y-axis is in normalized amplitude instead of byte value. So just go back here. See, this is from 0 to 255, and here it's from negative 1 to positive 1. OK, so I didn't actually have any signal or antenna connected, so 
that's why we're always at zero. So let's just look at the power spectrum real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do one more step, which is to subtract the mean that will remove any DC offsets. And here, this is what the spectrum should look like because there was no signal present. Okay, and just a quick note on something not to beleaguer it, but um, you might expect that no signal is uh, zero, but we were seeing everything at uh, 127. Why is that? Well, you have to remember that we're dealing with uh, AC voltages, so um, your zero here is not for a zero signal or a weak signal. Zero is reserved for a strong negative voltage and 255 is reserved for a strong positive voltage. So your middle byte here, 127, is actually going to be the no signal. So I think that would be more clear by uh, doing this again, but with a signal. So I already made a second recording. And this, we don't have to go over it again. But if we plot a histogram of the second recording, you can see it's much more spread out. You have all of your possible uh, 255 or 256 possible values are all present, which is good. So now we can plot this. Just a reminder, this is not our signal yet. These are the byte values and the number of bytes, our 20,000 bytes. We still have to uh, turn these 20,000 bytes into 10,000 complex samples, and these byte values, we should normalize them to 0 and 1, or sorry, to negative 1 and positive 1. Okay, so we can see, we can see that here with the normalized values, and for me, I just connected, I plugged in, a, I used a signal generator to put a sine wave directly into the SDR, and you can see you have a nice sine wave here. And then we can look at the power spectrum of the signal. And here we know that a sine wave in the time domain, this is what it looks like in the frequency domain. OK, not to make this too long, that's the uh, end of part A. So next time we can look at how to open IQ uh, files from different software tools. Thanks a lot for tuning in.